Welcome to this video on benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Before we begin, consider the following questions. What is BPPV and why does it occur? What are the risk factors? How does this present? What would you look for on examination? How can you investigate BPPV? And how can you treat this condition? Benign paroxysmal positional vertigo is the commonest cause of peripheral vertigo. This is a condition whereby a patient experiences intermittent episodes of rotatory vertigo when moving the head in a particular direction. This occurs due to displacement of otoliths from the utricle into a semicircular canal. As the canals usually only contain endolymph, the presence of otoliths causes an abnormally turbulent movement through the canal and thus an exaggerated stimulation of the copula. The otolith can either stay within the canal, known as canalolithiasis, or can stick to the copula, known as copulolithiasis. With canalolithiasis, the duration of disequilibrium tends to be shorter lasting, whereas copulolithiasis causes more prolonged generalized disequilibrium. Due to the position of the utricle in relation to the semicircular canals and the effect of gravity, displaced otoliths most frequently migrate into the posterior semicircular canal. Less frequently, they migrate into the lateral semicircular canal, and extremely rarely into the superior semicircular canal. Factors that increase the likelihood of oticonia displacing from the macula increase the likelihood of developing BPPV. These include age, due to degeneration of the macula, excessive mechanical forces of the inner ear, such as following head trauma or whiplash injuries, or following stapes surgery, hypocalcemia, vitamin D deficiency, and osteoporosis. Endolymphatic hydrops can also increase the risk of developing BPPV. Often, however, BPPV can be idiopathic with no notable risk factors. Classically, patients with BPPV report sudden onset rotatory vertigo lasting 10 seconds to a few minutes, typically occurring a few seconds after specific head movements, for example, looking up and down or rolling over in bed. This may be associated with nausea or visual disturbances due to the nystagmus. The direction of the head movement that precipitates the vertigo is an important clue as to the location of the pathology. In addition to a full neurootological examination to rule out any other otological conditions and to rule out a central or cerebellar cause of the vertigo, you would want to perform specific tests. These include a Dix Hallpike test where the head is turned 45 degrees and the patient is reclined from a seated position into a supine position with their head pitched 30 degrees. This maneuver ensures isolated movement through the posterior semicircular canal. During this test, you would observe the patient's eyes looking for the expected rotational nystagmus. The pagnani mcclure test isolates movement through the lateral semicircular canal. In this test, the patient is placed supine with a 30 degree neck flexion and then moves through a 90 degree roll. As before, you would observe for nystagmus which would be horizontal and with a fast phase towards the side of the affected ear. Superior semicircular canal BPV is extremely rare, and so instances of upbeating nystagmus should be investigated for a central neurological cause. If there is a strong clinical history of BPPV, but you are unable to elicit nystagmus on clinical tests, then consider formal vestibular testing with video nystagmography. This involves fitting the patient with Frenzel glasses. These magnify the eyes and obscures the patient's ability to fix their gaze, combined with video recordings for the eyes during movement. This can unmask subtle nystagmus. In patients who have atypical symptoms or central signs, consider an MRI scan. The majority of patients can be treated with an otolith repositioning maneuver, such as the Epley's maneuver for posterior BPPV or a Guffoni maneuver for lateral semicircular canal, BPPV. These are extremely effective treatments and can resolve the symptoms in over 90% of cases. There is a slight risk of a displaced otolith migrating into another canal during these maneuvers and thus converting the problem from a posterior to a lateral semicircular canal, BPPV. If the symptoms remain refractory to these maneuvers, repeating these with the aid of a TRV chair can help. This is a specialized piece of apparatus to which the patient can be secured before being moved through specific planes of movement aligned with the affected semicircular canal. In particularly distressing or recurrent cases, surgery can be considered. 
This would be in the form of a semicircular canal occlusion or plugging and is similar in principle to how the superior semicircular canal dehiscence is treated with a similar risk profile. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please consider subscribing and let us know what you'd like us to cover next.